Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa, and I am a second semester PGS dual major. Um, I don't have a topic yet, but I'm still learning and sensing, but I think I've gone over a tipping point to present what my diversity is. So, Russian and Mexican and Chinese walk into a bar, what language do they speak? English. English. And if you have played the game Telephone, so it originated from uh, England, but, well, actually it is played all over the world, but the same game in, in UK is known as Chinese Whispers. Can you follow me? And then sometimes also known as the Russian Scandal. In France, the name of the game is called uh, the Arabian Telephone. Think about it. In Malaysia, it's called the Broken Telephone. Think of the sentiments. Just think of the sentiments so far. So I'm here to tell you that I have PTSD. That's the reason why I'm wearing this uniform. Not because. Uh, Really, it's not because I'm proud of wearing this uniform. It's, I'm wearing this because it's, it's physically uncomfortable, if you know what I'm saying. And it is because of the discomfort that I'm wearing it to remind me that people have come before me who wore this patch, for example. Um, Yidik. How many people died in Yidik? And I'm privileged to wear this uniform. And I, this brings me to my point of loss aversion, which is a um, which is derived from the prospect theory, uh, which is a behavioral economy uh, concept, where it states that people prefer to stay; they feel more comfortable when they struggle. And this was a concept that was derived in 1970s. And this is before PTSD was a thing. PTSD was uh, listed as, it was classified in psychology in the 80s. And traditionally, marketing has used this concept to play into people's mind and therefore perpetuates people's belief. And that's why you have the horror behavior. I don't know how many of you can think of your own family. Back to your grandparents, your parents. After the war, first, second war. Those are traumas. Vietnam veterans who don't talk about their experiences. This is the world fair. I don't know if you have heard of the world fair. It is known for collecting the most innovative ideas from around the world. It started, well, in this case, this one, it's, it's actually the time where the Eiffel Tower was built. So we only remember Eiffel Tower, but we really don't remember a lot about what happened during that time in the world fair. So to give you a timeline idea, 1889, and then in 1962, we have it in Seattle, and 2018 is in Thailand. The human zoo. The human zoo is a concept, and it's not a concept, it is a real, it's a real event that happened in the 18th, 19th century, where um, uh, the uh, Colon, colonial, colonial, what do you call them? Mm, Col colonialists. Colonialists. Colonialists would bring back their innovation. In this case, humans from different tribes, from different parts of the world. And it's not just from Africa, it's from Asia and the rest of the Americas that is considered unique to And this is my story of why I'm wearing this uniform. This is the answer given to me by 
a guy who posted on Quora, and I felt obligated to answer because if I don't stand for myself, nobody will. And I was told that in the US, I am by definition a second class citizen. He's not wrong. Despite me wearing this uniform, I am a second class citizen. And then he went on to list that what the un un unnamed classes are. And I reminded him that, okay, fair enough. You have whites, 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 and then Latin, African, Asian, and then naturalized citizens. I said, to share you forgot female. Add, <laughs> add female into that permutation. Where do I stand? And the question that he was asked here is, what is your experience with MAVNI? MAVNI is a program that I enlisted with, and I'm the first thousand um, immigrants that were allowed to uh, enlist in because I happen to speak Malay, which is a language of, uh, of Big Brother <coughs> wanting to know uh, whether Malaysia is doing anything extreme, which is not unfounded. So he went from his original answer, this is a stupid program, I'll never is it. And after I debated with him, he changed it to good program to exploit and fully take advantage of ambitious idiots. So now I'm an idiot, I think that's an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I take that as, I take that as my, I take that as a compliment. And that's why I'm wearing my uniform. So if I have to give myself a persona, this would be my persona. I'm not Muslim, but I came from a Muslim country where the majority of my friends are Muslims. And in this case, I happened to speak Malay when I visited the National Mosque. And instead of giving me a, you know, a, a garb that usually Muslims wear, I was just giving a regular tudong. And so I looked like local. I actually was able to explore around in the National Mosque like a Muslim. But am I still Malaysian? I am. I can't just deny my past. Am I American? Yes, even though I'm an idiotic American to some. <laughs> am I Chinese? Yes, I am. <laughs> and that's why I am in America, because in Malaysia I was oppressed. So to give you a perspective of Asian Americans in America, the different degrees of Asian-ness, so to speak. This is a publisher um, that has just published, a, a launch of publishing in this year. Two minutes. And this was what I want to highlight. She said, you know, while, yeah, she was, she was surprised that most of the other Asians were you know exhibiting? She is the only Indonesian there, and in the in the conference, three people came up to her and asked why she, a person of Chinese descent, was promoting the Indonesian <laughs> literature. Why am I, of a Chinese descent, standing up for my nationality of Malaysia? And this leads me back to today, this is uh, April 8, 2018. We've come to a point whereby we have twins from same parents, one, one black and one white. And does one twin have more privilege than the other? Would one or twin have more privilege, power, and rank as they grow? That is why I'm speaking out today about PTSD. Because shame has an evolutionary purpose according to some researchers, and this was about a week ago. What is shame? We learn shame from last residency. According to Brene Brown, shame can only exist when there are judgment, secrecy, and silence. Going back to our own reflection of my own story, my secrecy was that, my, my, my family's secret was that my dad is a teacher, so he's poor. My mom is a housewife, 
who barely finished high school and therefore she couldn't she couldn't continue uh, education because of oppression. And because of that, she had to thank you. May I continue? Uh, yes, is it more than one sentence, Rafa? Uh, another slide. Two more slides. Do you want to be over time? Yes, I don't care. I don't care. Okay. Secrecies are killing our society. Secrets of our families. That, that, you know, um, I'm from a poor country, from a poor family. Bad story. You don't fucking talk about it. Why? Because it's a secret. And when you talk about it, what happens? You get judged. So when you stop talking about it, you get silenced. And all this is shame. So I thought this was very profound, but I get it now. What is trauma? Trauma is not something that happened to us, but it's what we hold inside when there is no empathetic listener. And that's why I'm verbalizing my trauma now. And then, trauma and physical symptoms. It's easy to talk about diseases you don't have, but then to talk the stories that you have. History is written, and then this is by a man, by a woman, what did she say? She said, history is written by victors, but it is victims who write the memoirs. <laughs> Power of passive voice. Why are we still facing problems when women reporting about PTSD, sexual assault, and people don't believe it because of the power of passive voice. So what I learned in class about the Plex model is engage in dialogue. The only difficult thing is to find a safe spot, a safe place. Is this a safe place? I think it's safe, it's safe enough, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm verbalizing. So my mission, purpose in life <laughs> right now, is to actualize shame, and I am starting for myself. Because in order to, in order to um, progress, I need to start talking about my own story. And I don't want to just talk about my own story to a small group of people. I want to talk. I want to make it public. So to me, what this result mean to me is, until I came to the US, I have always been surviving. The results of my past experiences, beliefs, and actions result in who I am today. Who I am moving forward, I'll have to dismantle the results that I've learned in the old ways, create new actions, which is what I'm doing right now, create a new set of beliefs, and then create a new set of experiences. That's how you apply. At least for me, that is. And National Geographic had also just last last month um, published this that South Asians, South Asian Americans are building a new American dream. And the forecast for global middle class population is actually moving to Asian Pacific. And that's even more so why I'm globalizing my story. So back to the Indonesian publisher that was introduced to me by this um, owner of a bookstore in Japan, South San Francisco, who is a war uh, Vietnam War veteran. He said it was learning about my Chinese heritage that saved my life. And he asked me to take it easy on my own life. Um, no. I think in order for me to go easy on myself, I have to verbalize in order to thrive. Because otherwise I won't be able to live a better version of my life. Because going back to the whole loss aversion, the whole marketing theory, oh, this is not there. This is actually a quote from um, Enduring Value. Speaking of, uh, be before there was the lady who said that women, um, victims write memoirs. So it was a quote from, from her that said that um, her dad had told her to strive harder at school and she had told her dad, 
No, she didn't tell her that, but inside her head, she was saying that, well, yeah, I do better than my white boys, but if you forgot that I'm also a girl, that means it, it's two times that as well. So moving forward, this is a quote that I come up with um, since I'm an immigrant twice. I don't know if, I don't, I, I, I'm not a refugee, but it's just because I happen to slip through the cracks. Um, a Native American hole, time and space. Um, how, how, would, how would the East bring value to America? Well, China is leading, and China and India is leading with um, the latest development of climate change, just because of how politically govern, government is run. And we in America have diversity. Question is, how much of our diversity are we utilizing? So going back to me experimenting with my new externalizing of my shame, um, I went back to a Debussy piece that I, I played because that piece was inspired by the human zoo in 1889. And what I ended up doing was I merged the story of Debussy with my own personal story. But because if I see myself as a Chinese, then I can't talk about the Malaysian culture. And so I had to go back and learn about my Malaysian culture because I was not taught about the Malay culture. And that's what I'm doing right now. And it's a funny quote, popular quotes. And this is me, another example of externalizing my shame because I was playing a piece that helps with my PTSD. And um, I had a moment where I realized how grateful I was to be able to have this skill set of music because my mom actually took out a loan so that we can afford to buy the harp. And as I was telling my story in public, and I started describing my dad, I realized, I said, wow, and my dad was only, and I caught myself saying that, I said, my dad is a fucking awesome teacher. Because teachers are being victimized. And I am being programmed to do that, and that's why I'm externalizing my shame. I think we all need to, but that's just me again, so that's my presentation. So no, no Q&A, right? Uh,